A journey that started about three years ago definitely has taken us to a lot of places as we continue exploring what our small scale and of course medium farmers are definitely doing. We have definitely moved from uh, you know checking you know farmers who keep you know animals, farmers who are definitely into vegetables, and of course we have also seen farmers who are into keeping you know uh, different varieties of uh, chickens. Lately. We decided to take keen interest in farmers who are raising birds. Now, these are very unique set of birds because they are usually wild birds, but you can domesticate them. When you domesticate them, we are calling them quails. Exactly. And of course, they are usually called by different names in different traditions. Obviously, growing up, um, for some of us who enjoyed our childhood, we used to call them tumboa because um, they've got that a very, very funny way of, uh, you know, protecting themselves. When you're in the jungle and it flies, they don't usually fly for a very long distance. Uh, it just flies for a very short distance, then it falls down. When it falls down, it just sits there. And they have got a camouflage, you know, kind of appearance. So it's easy for them to disappear, especially during the dry season. Some good, some, a, a lot of good people today have decided to take an interest in raising them. And I can assure you, they are very, very funny birds that you can definitely raise. Because one thing that we have learned so far is that they don't really need a lot of space for you to raise them. For instance, um, there is a young girl who stays in... Um, in 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 in, uh, in in Avondale, and of course today we decided to visit her. What she has done is that she's just decided to take like, a very very small portion. She's built her own, you know, her own design of uh, you know the cages, and you can see they are easy to raise. In this particular episode of Olimi, we want to take in interest in exploring how she came up with a very simple cage system and of course how she's raising and some of the benefits that she has definitely um, uh, found so far by raising quails and on top of that on the other side of uh, you know the building she's also raising what we call broiler chickens as well so we want to learn how we can as well maximize on um, you know profits and so on and so forth by raising these little beds that are gaining a lot of market at the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a beautiful journey today. All right, so we are still here in uh, Avondale and of course uh, we decided to pay a visit to um, somebody who is actually keeping you know quails so the cage system here is quite simple she's definitely uh, come up with one um, just one then partitioned it in two three so there is the first partition second partition and of course the third partition as well and of course each partition has a certain number of males and of course a certain number of females as well and the reason why there is this kind of partitioning is because sometimes quails especially males they tend to fight a lot allow me to obviously get to talk to christine as well christine thank you so much for allowing us today and uh, good to see you good to see you too Hello, Isa. how have you been i've been okay how have you been I've been all right as well for how long have you been doing this quail business i started last year in 2022 in somewhere in march so from march to today from march to today and um where did you get this idea of keeping quails looking at the fact that you know generally the majority of people usually go for broiler chickens okay so my parents some time back actually used to keep quails so i actually got the idea from them and when it comes to interest how did you develop interest for quails well i first started with broiler chickens then after some time i wanted to try different types of birds so i looked at quills and they are easier to maintain and yes okay uh, tell me something about the cage system where did you get this idea i expected that probably a young girl like you could have decided to go for you know a more artificial professional you know uh cage system at least which most of the people who use who keep quails usually use but you decided to come up with your own where did you come up with this cage system okay so this cage system to me is more cost efficient 
because you don't have to buy the cages. So everything here is recycled material. Then also the bedding, when the sawdust gets uh, wet, you can easily change it. Yes, so that's why I came up with this cage system. How often do you change this sawdust? Usually they don't make a lot of dirt, but maybe after three or four weeks. What is the secret for the success in keeping quails? What is the secret? I think it's maintenance and patience, yes. And you have to be really uh, careful and you have to pay a lot of attention to them. Yes. When you talk about you know, paying a lot of attention, what kind of attention are you, are you talking about? Well, for the first two weeks, they are very, okay, let's say hard to keep because of the, you have to maintain the heat in the rotors and you also have to observe to see if they're not fighting. And, Cause usually when they're small, they're very small and they like to get into any type of small space that they see. So you have to make sure that they don't get into those smaller spaces. So when you when you decided to start keeping quails, um, how many? Did you, what was the number? How many did you start with? I started with fifty quails. Fifty. Yes. Okay. Okay. Fifty quails. Um, I don't know whether you know the fifty were little ones, or perhaps they were you know point of lay. What kind of quails did you decide to start with? I started with chicks, the smaller ones, quail chicks. Okay. Uh, you got them from mom or you bought them somewhere? I bought them somewhere in garden garden house, somewhere near garden house. Okay. Great. And when it comes to the feeding program, how do you feed them? So from when they are young, there's quail starter. That's the one that you give them for about two weeks. Then when they are about three to four weeks, you can start giving them pre-layer to prepare them to start laying their eggs. Then about six to eight weeks, you can start giving them layer. Then when they reach eight weeks, they start laying eggs. Yes, then you can give them layer feeds throughout. Okay, so the moment they start laying eggs, from there, you start feeding them with, um, you know, layer, egg, uh, layer feed. Yes, yes. Um, what, what's, what's the difference when you look at uh, the three types of feed that you've talked about? What's the difference? Okay, so for starter feeds, it's usually about, it has more protein that helps the bird to grow. Then uh, for layer, it's more about the nutrients that they need in order for them to lay eggs and also change their hormones to allow them to lay eggs. When we look at uh, the business side of it, how, how variable are these beds? Do they bring, are, are they good in terms of making profit? How variable are they? Yes, they are very good in making profits because you also get to sell the quails as they are, live quails. You can also sell the meat and also the eggs. Yes, so it has a very, uh, it brings in a lot of profit. And when it comes to the market, how good is the market? The market is very good, especially if you have a larger number of quails, because you can easily get to supply bigger stores in Zambia, because they usually go for a larger number. Yes. So the market is very good. So if somebody was to get into you know, a quail business, um, would they struggle to find where to sell? No, they wouldn't struggle to find where to sell. Okay, it seemed to be quite a very, a, a very interesting business that definitely uh, somebody would uh, would want to explore a bit. Exactly. So now let's talk about uh, you know. Obviously, broilers depend on eating for them to grow to a level where they would be sold on the market. When it comes to this. How, how much do you feed them like in a day? For quails, they, don't, they do eat a lot, but um, the weight doesn't really matter compared to broiler chickens because they don't grow to, they just grow at a certain level, then after that they don't get any bigger. 
So it's much easier to have these quails because you don't have to worry about um, feeding them for them to be big or because this is the standard uh, weight for them. Then when it comes to feed, you don't really get to use as much feed as compared to broiler chickens. Yes, so maybe for 500 birds, you need probably about um, 15 to 20 bags of feed. For 500 birds, you need about 15 to 20 bags of feed. And, and, and for, this, uh, for, interest, uh, uh, for interest sake, how much do you get one bag of feed? Um, so I usually get uh, one bag of feed at 312. That's for layer feed. Then for grower, I get it at 320. Mm. So 312, 320, definitely that's what you need to start raising this. Uh, somebody told me, well, these are world beds. Are there any alternative in terms of uh, feeding? Can you, in, in, in case you run out of feed, can you feed them with anything looking at the fact that, you know, they are generally, you know, wild birds. Yes, you can feed them um, things other than feed. For example, they, you can feed them seeds. So you can feed them seeds for any type of fruit. Yeah, they do eat that. Yes. How much water do they need for them to, like, keep going? Uh, for me, I give them water throughout the day because it also helps with the uh, laying of eggs. So if you don't give them enough water, they are going to start having uh, difficulties with laying their eggs. Yeah, so you make sure there's enough water throughout so that they don't have any difficulties with laying their eggs. And that also helps with their growth. By the way, uh, the, the time you were starting, how much information and knowledge did you really have about you know, quails? I actually didn't have any information. I just learned along the way. Do you experience any, any, anything like, you know, fatalities, death and so on and so forth? Yes, I did. The first time I had 50 and about four died. Who died? Yes. For me, I think I wouldn't really get worried with four. 24! 24! Yes, only died. Okay. For the sake of that, that one watching, when when we talk about you know uh, these birds, how often do they fall prey to to diseases to the point that they would die? How strong are they? So for quails, they are they have a very strong immune system. They don't need a lot of medication, so they don't usually die out of diseases. So they are they have a very strong immune system, even compared to broiler chickens. Because once you vaccinate them for Gumburo and Newcastle, then you don't need anything else. For broiler chickens, obviously, uh, the vaccination comes um, uh, when, when obviously, when they are just about a week old, you vaccinate them. When they're about two weeks old, you vaccinate them. When they're three, you vaccinate. Four, you vaccinate. How about this? How often do you vaccinate them? So the vaccination is the same. So you vaccinate them at 10 days and at 12 days. Then you repeat again at 14 days and at 16 days. Okay. So do you use the same vaccine that you know you use when you are when you are um, uh, when you are vaccinating broilers? Or these have got a different vaccine? No, you use the same vaccine. So 10 days is Gumboro, 12 days Newcastle. Then 14 days again Gumboro, 16 days Newcastle. So from a, from my understanding, it seems like Gumboro and Newcastle usually affects all type of birds, right? Yes, they do. So definitely somebody who is keeping birds, you need to make sure that you vaccinate, you vaccinate, uh, okay. But uh, uh, these, you don't feed them with anything like, for instance, uh, stress packs, uh, 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 boosters, whatsoever. Do you usually, usually supplement that? No, I don't usually, but in a case where sometimes they do get stressed, maybe because of the heat or the cold, then you can administer stress park but other than that not really they usually they look to be very active birds so i don't know how you can tell to say here they are stressed or here they are not stressed. because uh, when you when you look at them it's either they are moving 
or they are fighting or they are eating or they are drinking water. So how how do you even tell? How do they even show to say, up, okay, we are stressed now? Okay, so you can tell they do stop moving. We just find they put themselves in one place. Then also you can tell by the decrease of egg production. So they do um, decrease the egg production. So meaning now you have to come up with the solution to that. So usually it's because of stress or because of too much heat. So those are some of the two factors that could actually obviously uh, lead to maybe slow production that is uh, stress as a result of maybe too much heat or maybe when it's cold. So now when it's cold, what do you do? When it's cold, I try to make sure that the, as you can see the, the cage is open everywhere to allow more air circulation. So when it's cold, I try to put these boards like this one here. I try to put these boards, then I also have the plastics there Then I try to cover to make sure that too, too much air is possible. Ah, okay, great. And um, um, for broiler chickens, aside from you know those some of those measures, others you'd find that they would actually use you know um, Dutch light. Exactly. I don't know whether you usually use it as well, just to make sure that you have got enough heat for this. No, I don't usually use it for quails because they don't really need a lot of heat. As you said earlier, they are wild birds compared to broilers. So what kind of feed is this which they are currently on? So for the smaller ones, this is um, quail starter. So I got this from Pembe Feeds. Okay, so this is a uh, starter. Okay, so uh, looking at the, the, the partition, um, I'm seeing quite a lot of s smaller ones in here as compared to the others. I don't know how it is. So for the smaller ones, there are actually a few because I couldn't uh, keep putting the... So for quails, they don't uh, sit on their eggs. You have to put them in the incubator in order for them to hatch. Now because of the load shedding, I thought it would be better if I don't put any eggs because they may not be able to hatch. So do you have incubators here with you or perhaps you do usually, you know, um, seek incubation services elsewhere? I don't have an incubator myself, but my uncle has one, and that's the one that I use for my eggs. Ah, okay. Uh, do I know your uncle? Well, what's your name of the <laughs> He's Mr. Lona. Ah, okay, 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 great. All right, so that is the story about uh, quails. So here we've got different sizes, but the majority, obviously, they look to be very, very small. So they are on um, starter. Then now comes here where it seems like there's too much noise. Uh, when when, when they're producing this kind of noise, uh, is it out of enjoyment or maybe they are trying to attract something? What is it? So this noise is uh, usually the noise that they make when they're, when they're just doing okay. You can actually tell from the sounds that they make whether they're okay or they're not okay. So when they are, if you put them in a small space, they'll start making a different sound to maybe they are being suffocated, they do make a different sound from this. Or maybe when there's smoke around, they'll start making a, a different sound. When they are hungry, they also make a different sound. So this is the normal sound that they make. Also when they are mating, they make this sound. So usually during the night, this is the sound that they make when they are mating, because they usually mate in the, in the night. Mm. It seems like, at this stage, it seems like there's a lot of mating going on, because I'm seeing a lot of uh, eggs being dropped. Uh, like, in general, like the whole, the way they are, how many are they in number? So I have 60 birds in here, then I have 50 in there, then in here I have about 50. Okay, so there's Kisti 50 and of course 50 there. So when it comes to picking eggs on a daily basis, I don't know how often do you collect these eggs and of course how many eggs do you pick like in a day? So I pick the eggs every day and sometimes the number does vary. So sometimes I do pick maybe about 60 eggs a day. Sometimes the number goes lower or higher. 
Wow, interesting. So as you can tell, there are quite a lot of eggs in, the, in there. I'm seeing quite a lot of eggs in here as compared uh, to, you know, the, the middle cage. Could it be that we have got more, more mothers here who are laying eggs as compared to this one? Uh, no, so you're seeing more eggs in there than in here because um, the time varies. Uh, they usually start to lay their eggs in the evening, so you find more eggs around maybe 16 to 20 hours. That's when you be able to see a lot of eggs. What is the best time to start picking eggs? Uh, okay, for me, I usually let them lay throughout the, the evening, then I collect them in the morning. Okay, interesting, interesting. So when you collect these eggs, I don't know, what, 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 what do you do with them at the moment? So when I collect the eggs, I put them on the egg trays and they are good for five days for hatching. So you can hatch them within a period of five days. After that, they're not good for hatching, but you can refrigerate them for eating for up to six weeks. Ah, okay, okay, okay. And by the way, do you, do you, do you eat curls yourself? <laughs> no, I don't. Why? <laughs> <laughs> so you only keep, so you've, 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 you've never tested quails? I've tried, but <laughs> I just couldn't. Ah, okay. These two, these children were born two thousand. I think they don't understand the taste of a bird. I think they have grown up eating a lot of, you know, broilers. But for us, I think we have eaten a lot of these, and I can assure you, these are very, very, very nice birds. At the moment, they are quite on demand. When you go to most of these shopping malls, it's rare that you're even going to find them because on most of the shelves, they are usually actually taken. There's a lot of people who are actually uh, eating a lot of, you know. Um, quails and also the eggs as well okay so now go in the long run um how big a business do you want this to be for yourself i'd love to have about even 10,000 20,000 birds because not only are they good for business but also for they have a lot of health benefits also yes okay so now um so like for instance I'm seeing these cages um, getting smaller and smaller, looking at just the number that you are. For instance, this is Sikisti, and you can't even put more 10, obviously it will be smaller. So um, when are you looking at, you know, expanding the cage systems and of course, you know, just making sure that, you know, you've got more cages? So for now, my biggest challenge is I don't have enough space because of the area that I'm living in. So they usually complain about the noise, this, this noise that they make, so I can't have a big number so now. So, but for now, I think maybe about 300 birds would be okay. Yes. Wow, okay. So they make, the, wow, they make quite a lot of noise, okay? They make a lot of noise, quite a lot. But uh, I think it's a noise that everybody has to enjoy because I think this is natural noise there. Okay, great. So now, um, by the way, for the sake of those people watching, how old are you? I'm 18. You're 18. So you started keeping these birds when you were? When I was 17, yes. Okay. Uh, did you receive any proud, you know, help, assistance from, let's say, mom, dad? For the quills when setting up, I raised all the money by myself. But after that, they do help me sometimes when I don't have enough money for feed. They do give me some money for feed. So like for instance, uh, a 50 kg bag of, uh, you know, a 50 kg bag of uh, feed, how long does it last? It can last for up to two weeks or more. Up to two weeks or more? Yes. Okay. That is for, um, uh, for how many birds? Let's say for instance, how many birds would actually keep a 50 kg bag of feed for about two weeks? So for now, let's say 200 birds can eat uh, a 50 bag uh, of feed in two weeks. Then for the smaller ones, a 50 bag, probably even for four weeks. Wow. So you can definitely do your own variation. Imagine if you've got um, 200, you know, broilers um, and 200 
quails definitely you can tell quails as much as they do eat a lot but at least a 50 kg bag of you know a, a feed can take you about a week or two but when you look at broilers when you have got 200 broilers and you're looking at a 50 kg bag of feed especially during their growing period when they are hitting you know between two weeks up to four weeks wow well, every week you need definitely to buy two I think those who are into broiler business like her definitely will be able to share that story as we get to the other section of the production as she's doing mixed production so she keeps quails here and on the other side she's also raising broilers as well then mom dad on the other side they do have villa chickens as well so it's kind of a mixed you know uh, uh, a poultry business that is actually taking place here Right, so we are still here in uh, Avondale and of course uh, still with our good friend here uh, Christine who decided to get into poultry business so she could uh, definitely raise a bit of some money for her school but along the way well she just loved it so she's got quails about 160 and currently doing very fine laying eggs okay and uh, now she's also into um, broiler business as well so maybe she can definitely take us through as well so um on on the broiler section for how long have you been keeping broilers so i also started keeping broilers last year in march which one was the first that you started with between you know um uh, quails and broilers i started with the broilers oh okay so i don't know how many did you start with i started with a hundred broilers yes challenges that you encountered you know when you were keeping when you you were starting the journey for broilers well the broilers they are very difficult to take care of because they easily get sick and also they need a lot of attention so from the hundred that you had kept how many um, did you manage to sell so from the first hundred that I kept I managed to sell all the hundred all the hundred so you did not have mortality? No, I didn't have any mortality. Oh, good. Just, uh, how did that really boost your, you know, your morale? It actually did boost my morale a lot. <laughs> Interesting. Now, I'm looking at, um, you're coming from a background where, you know, mom and dad were uh, keeping, you know, village chickens. They had quails. Why did you think of getting into broiler business? I wanted to see how the profits, how much profits I could make from it. Oh, okay, okay, great. So from the hundred, how much profit did you make? So for the hundred, I was selling them at hundred kwacha each. So that I made about two thousand five hundred profit. Two thousand five. Okay. So now uh, earlier, I think when we were having a conversation just in the background, um, you talked about okay. I started doing this because I wanted to raise money. How about interest? Did you previously have interest in keeping birds? No, I had no interest at all. Ah, okay, okay, great. Along the way, I don't know whether you have developed that interest. Are you seeing yourself stopping anytime soon? I have developed interest and I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. Okay. So, so far from last year, uh, May, March, up to date, how many times have you kept? Um, how many... Uh, sequences have you kept you know the broilers so i have them so this is my fourth batch yes so i've kept them four times you can say how many are they right now i have 300 birds now oh, okay so the first time you kept 100 they're moving from 100 you went i went to 150 from 150 i went to 2050 then from 2050 i came to 300 Okay, okay. So you've just been pushing by 50, 50, 50. So, so far, um, how would you describe your journey? How has been your journey of, you know, dealing with broilers so far? And in terms of the market, how has it been for you? 
my journey with broilers has been great but this batch i think is the worst that i have come across why um because um they have stunted growth they've never had that before so they haven't grown to the level that i usually uh grow them okay um any any mistake that you feel you could have made along the way that could have led to the stunting growth i think maybe overheating them when they were too young yeah. ah okay overheating them ah okay okay not giving them enough in, in, enough inflow of air not giving them enough yeah okay but when it comes to mortality for this batch the 300 batch uh, how has been the mortality the mortality it's been very bad i think um, the problem started with the breeders because the first day i lost about 5 birds then the first two weeks i lost about 20 in total the first time you uh, five then 20 so uh, all in all you've got about one uh, 270 yes okay and and, and 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 when it comes to you know um uh, just them you know suffering from you know things like diarrhea and stuff how has it been uh, for me i don't usually um, have sick birds so i think it's all about the management how you manage the birds how you disinfect the pottery and yes how you take care of them okay maybe tell, 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 tell us more about your, your management program how is your management program? so before they come in you have to disinfect the pottery disinfectants you have to make sure it's very clean you have to um, um, make sure that enough air is passing through the pottery that it's completely dry there's no room for diseases or anything like that so that's two weeks before they actually come in then when they actually come in you have to spray around you disinfect again and that's when you can put the birds in and you also have to be very careful every time you enter you have to disinfect yourself mm, interesting and i'm sure that i'm um, looking at uh, the low mortality uh, rate that you're experiencing I'm sure that you follow that program religiously. Hey, yes, I do. You have to be very careful because they easily catch diseases. So you have to be very careful. What has been your worst experience when it comes to, you know, broiler chickens? I think my worst experience is the one that I'm having now because they are not growing. <laughs> and you still have to keep feeding them even though they're not growing. <laughs> but, I'm, but, but, but I'm seeing a good number that are even uh, causing me to salivate actually a good number that we can kill eat properly and i think they're quite strong i'm seeing quite a good number so when you talk about them stunting i don't know what you mean what do you mean exactly first how has been your past experience with this my past experience has been very good i usually get very big chickens some i sell them at 110 120 but for these um, I don't think I've managed to sell any of them at that price. Yes, and stunting, they're not growing. So some, some are bigger, while others are still very small. Some actually look uh, two to three weeks. Yes. Wow. Those are some of the challenges, especially when you are keeping boilers. They could definitely heat at that level. So now, at, 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 at this level, when you look at the... The, the, the slow I, I, I wouldn't want to call them the stunting growth but the slow growth so what what do you do how what do you where do you go about from there when they are glow, growing quite slow like this uh, for me I've never experienced this but I think the best would be to start selling them. great nice nice well, obviously, for, 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 for some of you, you might, you might, you might think, uh, okay, so what is she talking about? Because the chickens that you're able to see on your screens, they look pretty much bigger, and maybe bigger than the ones that you bought during Christmas period, and New Year's period, and stuff like that. But for her, I think she's got a certain size. What, what, what is the size that you, you always want to achieve before you start selling your chickens out? I always want to make sure they're between 2 kgs to 2.5, sometimes even 3 kgs. Wow, so 2 to 2.5, sometimes 
three kg that is quite big do you usually achieve that amount of kgs within six weeks or maybe usually extend no i usually um, achieve during the six weeks okay okay any boosters that you give them just to get them to that size no i don't actually use any boosters no okay so far how has been the market response um from you know clients that you have been dealing with how has been their response no their response has been very good sometimes they actually ask you to keep them for a longer period so that they buy them at a higher price so it's been very good ah <laughs> you've got very good clients you should be telling them say guys mzini kuli na kona feed because i mean these things can actually eat a lot of feed especially when they are at that particular stage so when are you looking at you know opening up you know just for selling to the general public i think i'll start tomorrow Saturday. So we can start taking them to the market tomorrow. All right, so definitely those chickens that you're able to see will be on the market coming, you know, uh, uh, the weekend, and you can definitely have them tasty as well. So when it comes to, you know, your broiler business, your broiler journey, how far do you, do you want to go? How far are you seeing yourself? I really want to have a big number of broilers or so, maybe even 100,000. Yes, a really big number. What is your target market that you're going to supply in the nearest future? I would really love to support bigger companies like ShopRite and Pick and Pay and also big, big hotels. Okay, definitely. There is a lot of open market when it comes to, you know, this kind of, um, this kind of business because um, currently government is encouraging you know even you know uh, these big outlets to buy from Zambians so probably she could be one of the people that should be putting herself on the line to supply to you know places like ShopRite, uh, ShopRite and of course other big companies as well both the quails and of course these as well when it comes to uh, you know these broilers you've kept them for time um, are there, time, are there times when you could miss your vaccination programs? Are there times when you could forget vaccinating them and so on and so forth? No, I have never forgotten because you have to follow exactly the dates that you're given because once you miss a date, the vaccine might not be effective on the birds. So you have to follow the program as it is. You don't have to miss the days. Okay. Uh, for this, you talked about uh, having an immortality of about... Uh, Twenty. What could have led to that um, to, 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 to that mortality? So that was in the first week and some of the first days. So I think it, the problem could have been with the breeders where we bought them from. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Do you have uh, specific breeders where you usually get, or maybe time and again, you usually experiment? You try this, you try that, you try that. No, I always get them from rose rose breeds. And when it comes to, you know, um, th there was a time when chicks became very, very rare on the market. Yeah, people had to make orders free before they could receive their orders and so on and so forth. How is it at the moment? Has things stabilized or maybe we still have that period whereby you have to, to, to make an order free before, maybe let's say two weeks, a month before you receive yours? So for December, that's the month that usually people target because of the Christmas and New Year's Eve. But other than that, so before that you have to make an order. So for me, I actually received my chicken plate because I made the order in November and I received the first week of December. So it still scares sometimes, but as for now, I think everything has gone back to normal. Okay, and how much feed do you get, let's say for a batch of 300, like for this batch, how much feed did you get? So pay 50 birds, it's five bags of feed. So for 300, you need about 30 bags, but also maybe five extra bags. So now you can definitely do your quick mathematics when it comes to keeping quails and also keeping broilers as well. Yes, as much as a broiler, you'll be able to sell it probably for 90 or 100 quarter that you can definitely quantify. So. For 50 broilers, you need about five, um, five, uh, uh, five bags of feed. So if you have got 300, definitely do your multiplication. I'm sure most of us have done well in mathematics. So you can do your multiplication, then you know exactly how much feed you will need. At the moment, how much are you buying a 50 kg bag of feed? 
So they actually have different prices, starting from grower to finisher. So um, starter is the most expensive one. Starter? Yes. So starter is about 450. Then grower is about 430. Then finisher feeds are 400. Okay. So for those who are into um, a quail business, I think for them, I think they're much better. Because obviously they can use, um, are, th are there times when you've run out of feed that side, you get feed from the other department? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have run out of feed sometimes, I just get from here and give that, but you can't do it the other way around. Oh, you can't do it the other way around. You can't get, you know, quail feed and w feed the private. No, you can't. Okay, so only quails can definitely eat almost everything. <laughs> yes, yes, they can eat almost everything. But are there any problems, let's say for instance when they are laying, are there any, 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 any problems, does it affect their capabilities to, uh, to lay eggs enough or something like that? Yes, um, they, uh, the feed is also plays an important role in the laying of eggs because you can't give them um, feeds for chickens and then you expect them to lay. So sometimes you find they completely stop laying. So you have to give them the feed that they're used to which is layer feeds. So you can't get finisher from the broilers or grower from the broilers, but at least you can get layers from the layer chickens to feed them. Ah, okay. So the other side, when we were coming in, we saw some layers. Those layers, are they also, they are also part of, you know, the project, isn't it? Yes, they are. Okay. Are you the one who is still running that one? No, no. Ah, okay. But can we take a look at just other? Okay, great. So we go to the other department where there are a couple of layers as well. Some have actually been sold, quite a lot of demand, but we still have a couple of them remaining there that we are just definitely going to take a snooze on. All right, so despite, you know, uh, despite the environment where you are, despite, you know, how small the space is, there is always something that you can make, you can raise and, of course, make money out of that. Definitely, Christina has decided, has uh, seen to say, well, I think quails, despite the fact that, you know, uh, size matter, but even just a smaller cage will definitely help me make something at the end of the day. So she's definitely into quail business and she's also raising broilers as well. So you can definitely do that as well in the next couple of years. Um, where are you seeing yourself first of all in a couple of years, especially in this kind of business that you've started? Okay, so I really want to grow my business. Hopefully I can start getting uh, bigger numbers of broilers as well keep on increasing and also maybe have a farm so that I can also increase the number of birds quails that I'm having okay so definitely uh, in 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 uh, in, uh, in all the pro in all your plans quails are still there <laughs> yes they are. Okay. and when it comes to eggs I think you did mention that sometimes you also do sell eggs where do you sell them exactly well, usually I sell them to farmers as well because they also would love to start keeping and also people who have health problems. They are also recommended for a lot of health problems. They can also help you. And how much do you usually sell them? I sell a tray at 45. Okay. And when we talk about a tray, um, how many eggs does a tray contain? A tray has 30 eggs. That's 30 eggs. Okay, so if somebody buys 30 eggs or fetal eggs, we are a tray of fetal eggs. We are talking about them roughly having about 30 beds, right? Yes, depending on the efficiency of your incubator. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So when the incubator is good, but if the incubator is good, how is the, the percentage, uh, the, the hatching rate? Usually it's about 98 to 96. 98 to 96. Yes, sometimes even 100, depending on your incubator. Ah, okay. 
So definitely the, the hatch rate is quite good. So if you get uh, two trays of uh, you know, fertile eggs, you are looking at having at least close to skisty birds. That could be a very good startup project for you. So give it a try. Who knows, it can definitely take you places and uh, it can get you where you definitely never thought you could definitely do. So this is the second episode uh, in our journey in uh, discovering, you know, the value of agriculture in Zambia where we have covered, you know, quails at a larger ex uh, extent like that. We have definitely seen other farmers keeping quails at a very smaller percentage, but at least these, the previous one, um, and of course her as well they have decided to look at quails at a larger you know extent so now that you know space is limited here what are your plans when it comes to quail business so my plans for now i think is just to try to raise some money to get a bigger piece of land yes so but for now i think i'll still maintain the number that i have or try to grow maybe up to 300 quails then from there yeah, that's the number that I can maintain for now. All right, so our journey definitely continues, even as it is um, moving from here. We don't know where our journey is going to take us next, but believe me, it's definitely going to take us to another exciting place where we are going to learn more about, you know, uh, people have definitely taken agriculture as a business from a startup point up until a professional point as well. She's been in business less than a year, but this is how far she's gone. So it's never too late, definitely, for you to begin doing something in the agricultural sector. Hey, oh yeah.